Oh my gosh, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back, I'm back. If you don't know, I've moved back to the US. I have been here for four months and I have not been recording a whole heck of a lot. So today I decided to make a video and I think you're gonna like this topic. It's the seven things that I really miss about New Zealand. Now, don't freak out. Like I could do the same thing about seven things I love about living in the US, but today I am missing New Zealand. I'm thinking about New Zealand and I have seven things that I'd love to share with you today. You're going to want to stay to the end because some of the other ones, the ones that I'm going to share might surprise you. So here we go. Okay, number one. And this may seem not like a big deal, but you guys have no idea. My number one thing that I am missing in New Zealand is your coffee, okay? This drip coffee that they drink here is, I, I've literally just been trying to embrace it. But honestly, I'm sitting here in like a brain fog right now because I can't ever have enough caffeine. <laughs> and people here, they just keep drinking, keep drinking because it's not that strong. You know, just give me my two shots of espresso and I'm fine. And I don't want to pay $6 for milk. Okay. Like I, <laughs> I literally went to a cafe this week and I said, I was just like my head, I had so much to do. I was so tired. And I was like, do you have a flat white? And they were like, yes. The, the, the actual barista in the back goes, yeah, I can make that for you. I know how to make that. And I was like, oh, Thank you, Jesus. Oh my goodness. It was amazing. Okay. And so like, I just haven't been doing well with this drip coffee and I need to get an espresso machine, but you know what? I need to buy everything. I had to start over. I didn't have anything. So it's not on the top priority being that I'm the only one that drinks it, but it's, I'm getting there. Like I'm starting to die now. <laughs> Four months and I have really, I have just tried to embrace it. I can't do Starbucks. I got my pumpkin spice latte and I threw up. I can't, I don't know. I literally go in there and these drinks are just full of so many flavors. Like just give me my two shots of espresso and a little bit of milk. I'm good. I went to one restaurant and they, I said, can I just have your espresso? And the guy looked at me like, is that all you want? And I'm like, that's all I want. And it came out, no joke, you guys, it looked like, like a kid's, um, you know, a tea set. And it was like, a, like this tiny of a little thing. It was like literally two shots, like, like that's it. Nothing else. Just give me that, which was great. And I've been back many times and they probably know me as the espresso girl. Cause like nobody orders that, but it's this cute tiny. I felt like I was in Italy, right? I was in Europe. Like that's how they do it. Like that's all I need. Just load me up. I don't need to pay. 675 for basically milk with a lot of flavor shots in it. So just give me my two shots of espresso. So guys, I'm missing, oh, I am missing the coffee, guys. I said coffee, I said coffee. And number two, in the same realm as coffee, I have to say, I am desperately missing like the breakfast food in the cafes in New Zealand, like the brunches or just breakfast food, eggs. Like my favorite thing to order when I go out for breakfast is eggs and the eggs in New Zealand are so beautiful and so good. And like the way that they display breakfast, they don't mess around. Like it is gorgeous. Like you want to eat it. It's all the, the extra chutneys and the beautiful, you know, little things on the side and the fruit and the, it's just beautiful and it's delicious. I order breakfast here. The, the eggs are fried and yellow and look like they've been sitting in Greece. At least I don't have to ask for crispy bacon in the U S so I'm automatically getting that, but then you get a side of like hash browns, which are greasy. And I don't know, like, I really miss it. I love brunch. It's my favorite thing to go out to eat and have, and I'm sure I can find good places here, but in general, oh, when you're ordering, like even at a decent place, like the eggs, like I can't even order eggs. So then I have to order pancakes and I'm like, yeah, those are good. But like, I don't need cake for breakfast. Like I need a little protein and I'm just, I can't, I can't get myself to order the eggs. Like they're just always disappointing. And in New Zealand, they're just beautiful, orange, delicious, tasted good. Like, I don't even know what's going on in the U S too. Like the avocados, they don't taste very good. here. <laughs> I don't know the breakfast food, not very good. And it, they give you so much, like you don't, you have eggs and bacon and hash browns and a side of bread and a side of toast and then a side of pancakes and all that for, you know, $9.99, right? And it's just too much. And then they don't have espresso. So I'm not winning. I'm not winning. Number three, let's talk about the healthcare. I've been here for four months. I still don't have insurance. It's starting next week. My husband got a job. We finally got insurance because it's so expensive. I was like, oh my 
gosh, the insurance. And like, here's some stories. So this week I went to the pharmacy to go get some um, vaccines for my son. And this is a problem. This is a problem when you move so many times, like I have. My brain doesn't register which country I'm in when I'm making decisions. So when the school tells me like he can't go to school unless he has these two vaccines, in my mind, it would make sense that the vaccines wouldn't cost anything because they wouldn't in New Zealand. You never have to pay for anything but under 18, right? And I was like, in my mind that that makes sense because that's what New Zealand would do. But here I get there and they're like 300 and some dollars, for two shots. And I'm like, what? And I was like, do you have, they're like, do you have insurance? I'm like, okay, it's starting next week, but I need to get this done. And then they're, I'm like, well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. So now I have to wait. I got to go make another appointment. Do it. I mean, the hoops that you have to jump through to get anything. Oh my goodness. And then he's like, well, it depends on your insurance and you might need to go here. You know, like nothing's easy. And like, even like going to a different pharmacy is a different price for your drugs. Like in New Zealand, it was the same, no matter what, like it was just, easy and like you would go and if there was a problem you wouldn't walk out with this huge bill you guys i don't know i this is rough i knew it was bad i knew what it was like it isn't like i walked in ignorance but man it's just such a shock when you come back and it's just like everything and i'm just like even just to make the decision on which health plan we're going to choose when my husband started work took like hours to like figure it out figure out well this would make sense and then you know what if this happened you know Oh my goodness, you guys, the healthcare system in the U.S. is just messed up. Number four, you know what I really miss? Is the New Zealand relaxed attitude. I'm telling you, the things in the U.S., like they, they're, they're much more cutthroat. Like, you need to be here. You need to do this. If you're late for work in New Zealand, if you're late for school in New Zealand, it's like, no worries. Like, we don't want you to get an accident. We don't, that attitude, that doesn't, that doesn't exist here. It's not that they're really mean and that they're being difficult. It's just that, you know, they're just very much like, this is the expectation and you need to meet it. And my children are noticing this. <laughs> they're noticing this in sports. Like there's no, there's no, like you have to do this and you have to be on time and there's no flexibility, <laughs> you know, and it's not like my kids are late or anything, but it's just, it's so funny. And like, even at school. Okay. So my kids are in middle school and high school. And even in school, they have syllabi syllabi for each class so i had to sign 12 of them for like each one of their classes saying that i've read it these are the expectations and that i'm agreeing with it because i just feel like this is going to be thrown back in my face you know imagine in new zealand people having you sign the syllabus saying i mean not just the parent the child and the parent both have to sign them and like it's a great and it has to be in an uncertain date i mean it was my kids must have been like, what the heck is this? Mom, you just need to sign this, <laughs> you know? But I know what it is. They're saying that if there's any issues with your kid and the grade, like, mm, you agreed, you agreed, you sign the contract. So even in middle school and high school, we have to sign contracts for our children. Mm -hmm. Number five, mm, number five. What I really miss about New Zealand is that I didn't have any allergies. If we're turning into fall here, I live in Wisconsin. There are four seasons. The weather changes often. It's hot, it's cold, and who the heck knows what's going on. Raining, not raining, humidity, I don't know. Crazy stuff growing, and I am constantly sneezing. And I'm constantly blowing my nose, I'm constantly changing, and I forgot about this. I forgot how bad my allergies were here. Like I, when I got to New Zealand, I, this was really noticeable when I first moved there, like no allergy, like ever no sneezing. I like didn't get sick either. Like nobody got sick. We had COVID. That's it. We didn't get sick. I mean, I don't know what's happening over there in that environment, but here I'm like, sneezing like crazy and it's just starting to be fall and like, it's going to be bad. So I'm really missing the no allergy zone for me over there. And number six, I already got the email this week, guys. I got the email this week. There's been an incident at your kid's school and there's concerns and there is a threat. I know this to be true about the U.S. schools, but it's still a shock when it's happening to you and your child in the school and they're not giving you any information. And they're just like, oh my gosh. And now my kids are going through active shooter training next week. And it's like, oh my gosh, really? Like this is what we're dealing with. And it's scary, you know? And I talked to my kids about it and they've gone through active shooter training there in New Zealand too. So that made me feel a little bit better, but I mean, you gotta be prepared. Obviously I'm not against that. It's just, 
I guess the realities and bringing it so close to home is just like, oh, I had to take a deep breath. I mean, it sounds like the school handled it well and you know, it's good, but man, I just, that is just not, I just don't think there's at any point that parents are like, are used to this, that, you know, that it's not a complete shock and a complete like, oh my goodness. Uh, especially when like literally last year I'm living in New Zealand and now I'm here for, you know, family reasons and, and wonderful reasons. But man, the realities, the pros and cons of places are some of the cons can be really bad. And like, oh, so everything's fine, but it's just the harsh reality of, you know, and it's interesting because I was talking to people about it and they're like, this is the harsh reality of the world we're living in. And I'm like, not the world, America, okay? It's America. Now, there isn't, isn't like there isn't shooters other places, but it's not even the same. Like a certain number of people need to die before it needs to even report it here. Like, it's not the same. <laughs> it's here. It's not everywhere. Okay, and the final one that I wanna talk about, and don't be mad, because I feel like you might be mad if you've been following me a long time and you've heard me complain about this in New Zealand. But I've, I've come to a new realization. Now hear me out. I really miss the police cameras taking pictures of speeding. I know. I've complained about that forever in New Zealand. Like I always thought it was so like passive aggressive, like take the picture and send me this huge bill in the mail. And I don't know, I just didn't like that. But you know what? Now that I've experienced that and I've come back to like police cars, like hiding, trying to catch you in like, you know, like as the, um, that that it changes like the miles per hour like it just changes from like 45 to 35 to 25 and they're trying to catch you there's just so many more police there's so many more police i think i lived in new zealand i've lived in new zealand for eight years i think i saw police twice maybe three times like like i never saw police and now i think that i'm seeing the police all the time for obviously good reasons i don't live in the safe city but like it's pretty I don't know. I don't like that better. I've gotten pulled over even. And I was like, I don't even know what I did wrong. And he was like, do you not know what you did? I'm like, I actually don't know what I did. I was going the speed limit. And he's like, no, you're going. He, I'm like, no, it's not. It's this speed limit. And, and he's like, no, it changed. And I'm like, no, it did not change from where I turned. There was no sign. I was looking because I'm new to the area. And he was like, so he didn't give me a ticket because he realized I was right. But yeah, so this is what I missed in New Zealand. My ability to negotiate the ticket. Okay, but no, I've decided no. I don't like the police hiding and pulling you over and all, no, that's not better. I was wrong, I admit it, I was wrong. I missed the cameras. Bring back the cameras. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment below and let me know anything else you'd like to see or anything you want me to talk about because it's a little bit weird. Like I'm not living in New Zealand and so like I'm trying to make videos that are helpful to you, that are interesting to you. So post topics, things you want me to talk about, I will talk about them. I still help people move to New Zealand. That's going really, really well. If you're looking to move to New Zealand, reach out to me and start with my free course. It's in, uh, in the description below, but like, you know, talk to me. Let me know what you guys are interested in hearing because it's like, I feel like when I'm not in New Zealand, I don't like know, like in my mind, like I'm not experiencing it every day. So topics are not just coming out of my brain, but maybe you just want to know about the U.S. and I'm happy to do that. But like, let's talk. Tell me what you'd like to see and I'll see you next week.